in the last class we discussed about Newton Raphson method which helps us to solve an equation of the form f of x is equal to 0. It produces a sequence of iterates which converge to a root of the equation f of x is equal to 0. The method is given by x n plus 1 equal to x n minus f of x n by f dash of x n. We observe that the method involves computation of the derivative of the function at each step of iteration that is a drawback in Newton Raphson method. Namely, at each iterative step we not only have to evaluate this function f of x n, but also evaluate its derivative at x n. So, it involves two function evaluations at each step. So, we would like to now develop a method which does not involve evaluation of derivative of a function at each step of iteration. So, we make a slight variation as follows. So, we know by definition of a derivative of a function that f dashed at some p n minus 1 is limit as extending to p n minus 1 of f of x minus f of p n minus 1 by x minus p n minus 1. If suppose I let x to be say p n minus 2, then f dashed at p n minus 1 can be approximated by f at p n minus 2 minus f at p n minus 1 by p n minus 2 minus p n minus 1. So, I would like to make use of this approximation to a derivative and then slightly modify Newton Raphson method as follows p n is equal to p n minus 1 minus f at p n minus 1 by f dash at p n minus 1, but f dash at p n minus 1 is f of p n minus 2 minus f of p n minus 1 and numerator will have p n minus 2 minus p n minus 1. So, which I can write as p n minus 1 minus p n minus 1 minus p n minus 2 into f at p n minus 1 by f of p n minus 1 minus f of p, p n minus 2. So, if I want to compute an nth approximation to a root of the equation, then I have the method given as p n is p n minus 1 minus p n minus 1 minus p n minus 2 by f of p n minus 1 minus f of p n minus 2 multiplied by f of p n minus 1. So, this tells you that at any step you require the knowledge of the successive approximations at the previous two steps namely to find what p n is you must have a knowledge of p n minus 2 and p n minus 1. If you know that then use the right hand side to find what p n is at the nth step. Suppose say you start with two initial approximations p naught and p 1 of a root of the equation f of x is equal to 0. So, this is the graph of the function say y is equal to f of x. So, I make two approximations p naught and p 1 and then I join the line 
passing through the points P naught comma F of P naught and P 1 comma F of P 1. And I see where this line crosses the x axis and I call this as my next approximation namely P 2. The actual root is the point where the graph of the function crosses the x axis. So, this is the actual root. Initially, I take two values P naught and P 1 which are close to this P and then consider a line passing through the points P naught f of P naught P 1 f of P 1 and then see where this line crosses the x axis and take that point as a next approximation to the root of the equation. Let us see what is P 2. So, what do I need? I require the equation of a line passing through the point the points P naught comma F of P naught and P 1 comma F of P 1. It is given by y minus F of P 1 by F of P naught minus F of P 1 is equal to x minus P 1 divided by P naught minus P 1 and therefore, we have y to be given by x minus P 1 by P naught minus P 1 into f of P naught minus f of P 1 plus f at P 1. What do I want? I want y to be 0 and x is P 2 namely the point where the graph of the function crosses the x axis. So, that gives you P 2 minus P 1 into f of P naught minus f of P 1 divided by P naught minus P 1 plus f at P 1. This gives me P 2 as P 1 minus f of P 1 into P 1 minus P naught by f of P 1 minus f of P naught. What is this P 2? P 2 is the point where the line joining P naught f of P naught and P 1 f of P 1 crosses the x axis and that gives me the next approximation. Then what do I do? I join the line passing through the points P 2 comma f of P 2 and P 1 comma f of P 1 and see where it crosses the x axis and call that as P 3. So, that I can express P 3 now in terms of P 2. What do you expect? P 3 will be P 2 minus f of P 2 into P 2 minus P 1 by f of P 2 minus f of P 1. The, the computations are analogous to this and then I continue this computation and generate successive iterates and at the end step my P n is given by P n minus 1 minus f of p n minus 1 into p n minus 1 minus p n minus 2 by f at p n minus 1 minus f at p n minus 2 for n greater than or equal to 2. The method so derived is what is called the secant method. Why is it called the secant method? 
the reason is it approximates the curve in this interval by means of the chord or the secant passing through the two points p naught f of p naught p 1 f of p 1 and so on. So, it derives its name secant and you observe that as we move closer and closer to the root right this secant in the limit will become a tangent to the curve at the point p and it is this tangent line which approximated the curve in the new in Newton Raphson method. And that is why the method derives its name as secant method and we observe that we do not have evaluation of derivative of a function instead we have two function evaluations here again, but both of them are evaluation of the given function at two different points namely p n minus 1 and p n minus 2. So, let us now compare secant method with Newton Raphson method and see which converges faster. Let us now compare the performance of the secant method and the Newton Raphson method. We will consider determining the root of the equation f of x is equal to cos x minus x equal to 0. By secant method starting with two initial approximations p naught as 0.5 and p 1 as pi by 4. We observe that the successive approximations are given by this and the result at p phi is accurate to tenth decimal place. A root of the equation is 0.739085133 and that is obtained at the fifth iteration using secant method correct to 10 decimal places. We solve the same equation using Newton Raphson method, which is given by x n plus 1 equal to x n minus f of x n by f dash of x n for n greater than or equal to 0. Starting with an initial approximation, which is this, it is the same as the p 1 here. We observe that Newton Raphson method obtains this accuracy with p 3. So, the third iteration we are able to get the same accuracy for a root of this equation as that was obtained by secant method say at this step. And we observe that both Newton Raphson method and secant method require good initial approximations to a root of the equation. And comparing the two methods, we observe that secant method is slower than Newton Raphson method. So, you may ask me why then you consider this method which is lower than Newton Raphson method because you want to generate a sequence of iterates which converges faster. But there is an advantage when you use secant method, you do not have to compute the derivative of a function at each step of your iteration, you know what the function f of x is and you have to evaluate it at two different points that is the advantage of secant method. Whereas, in Newton Raphson method you need to compute two different function evaluations namely the function f and its derivative at each step of iteration. Another observation that we would like to make is the following. When we uh, use Newton Raphson method we observe that we have successive iterates 
which are such that iterates p naught and p 1 they do not enclose this root of the equation. Similarly, p 1 and p 2 if you look at these two values this interval does not enclose the given root of the equation. So, we come across in the computation of iterates using Newton Raphson method that the interval of interest does not enclose a root of the equation, but when we consider the successive iterates the iterates converge to the root of the equation. The same thing happens in the case of secant method also. When we look at secant method we observe that p naught p 1 encloses the root of the equation. However, as we generate the successive iterations we come across a step where p 3 p 4 does not enclose a root of the equation. And therefore, this suggests that we must develop a method which takes care to see that a root of the equation lies in the interval at each step of our iteration. So, one of our observations from here is that Newton Raphson method and secant method are not enclosure methods bisection method was an enclosure method because at each step of iteration we had an interval which encloses a root of the equation. However, Newton Raphson method and secant method are not enclosure methods as is evident from this example. So, we would like to now modify secant method in such a way that we also want to ensure that at each step of iteration we have an interval which encloses a root of the equation and this can be done very easily. What should we do? Let us consider the given equation y equal to f of x is equal to 0. So, we draw the graph of this function the point where it crosses the x axis is the actual root. What did we do in secant method? We started with two initial approximations namely p naught and p 1. Then we approximated this curve by means of a straight line passing through the points p naught f of p naught and p 1 f of p 1 and then the point where it crosses the x axis was taken to be p 2. But what do we want now? We said that we should ensure that at any step of iteration the interval must enclose a root of the equation. So, when we compute this p 2 we check the sign of f of p 2. If suppose f of p 2 is negative and f of p 1 is positive then we know that a root lies in the interval p 1 to p 2. Here that is what happens f of p 2 is negative. So, a root lies in the interval p 2 to p 1 and so we join the straight line through the points p 2 f of p 2 and p 1 f of p 1 and the point where it crosses the x axis is p 3. Suppose in, in the case which we discuss f of p 2 turns out to be positive 
then we check whether a root lies between p naught and p 2 or p 2 and p 1. Accordingly, we select that interval in which a root lies and then we take a straight line joining the two points appropriately in such a way that at one of the points the function value has a negative sign and the other one has a function value which is positive sign. And therefore, we ensure that a root lies in this interval and continue in our computations and determine the successive iterates. If we do this namely, if we start with some two initial approximations and continue to generate the successive approximations such that at each step we make sure that a root lies in that interval and then generate the successive iterates, then we are essentially solving the problem by what is called as the method of false position. Namely, it is a regular falsy method. So, we are solving by method of false position and it is also known as regular falsy method. Essentially, it is secant method, but it only takes care to check that at each step a root lies within the interval. So, let us work out an example and see how regular falsy method is used in the solution of equation f of x is equal to 0. Let us now compare the performance of regular falsy method and secant method. So, let us solve the same problem f of x is equal to 0 given by cos x minus x is equal to 0 and start with the same two initial approximations p naught and p 1. Regular falsy method is essentially secant method, but it only takes care that at each time an interval encloses a root of this equation and accordingly chooses that interval as the two successive approximations for the next step. So, we observe that the successive approximations are given by these when you apply regular falsy method. And the result that we had earlier obtained using secant method is given by this and we observe that the approximations obtained by the regular falsy method and the secant method they agree through p 3. So, these are the same as what we have obtained in regular falsy method also. The secant method continues further and a root of the equation is obtained as this correct to the desired degree of accuracy at the fifth iteration. On the other hand, regular falsy method requires one more iteration namely the result is obtained correct to the desired degree of accuracy only at the sixth iteration, but with secant method we could obtain it at the fifth iteration. So, this is slower than the other one, but it imposes an extra condition ensuring that at each step we have a root which lies within an interval and therefore, the regular falsy method comes under enclosure methods, whereas the secant and the Newton Raphson method do not fall under the class of enclosure methods. So, we see how nicely each of these methods have been generated by seeing some drawback in the previous method that we have derived. And then the question now comes to which class of methods do Newton Raphson method and secant method belong to. 
if they are not in the class of enclosure methods. We show that Newton Raphson method belongs to the class of fixed point iteration methods. We now perform the error analysis of secant method. So, secant method is given by x n plus 1 equal to x n minus f of x n into this and E n is x n minus p. So, we want to obtain relationship connecting E n plus 1 and E n. So, we start with E n plus 1 which is x n plus 1 minus p, but x n plus 1 is given by this because we are using secant method now. So, it is x n minus this expression minus p. So, we simplify this expression. So, it is x n into f of x n minus x n f of x n minus 1 minus f of x n into x n plus f of x n into x n minus 1 by the denominator minus p. So, x n f of x n cancels. So, we have x n minus 1 f of x n minus 1. No, we have <coughs> x n minus 1 f of x n minus x n f of x n minus 1 by f of x n minus f of x n minus 1 minus p. So, we simplify this step. So, this term appears as it is, this also appears as it is. So, minus p into f of x n plus p f of x n minus 1 by the denominator. So, we collect terms involving f of x n. So, we have this term and this term having f of x n. So, multiplied by p minus or x n minus 1 minus p minus terms involving f of x n minus 1 are these and they give you minus f of x n minus 1 into x n minus p by the denominator but we know that x n minus 1 minus p is E n minus 1, x n minus p is E n. So, this step follows from here. Now, I remove the factor E n from the numerator and E n minus 1 from the numerator. So, I have E n E n minus 1 into f of x n by E n minus f of x n minus 1 by E n minus 1 divided by this. And now, E n E n minus 1 and I would like to multiply and divide by x n minus x n minus 1. You will understand why we do it when we proceed further. x n minus x n minus 1 is multiplied and I have divided otherwise there is no change in this step as compared to this step. At this stage, I would like to find out an expression for the factor which appears here. So, I make use of the fact that f of x n is f of p plus e n that is f of p plus e n into f dash of p plus e n square by 2 f double dash of p plus order of e n cubed. But I know that f of p is 0 because p is a root of the equation and therefore, I get f of x n by e n is f dash of p plus this is divided by e n. So, half of e n f double dash of p plus order of e n square because we have divided by e n. So, similarly I can write down what is f of x n minus 1 by e n minus 1 that will again be f dash of p plus half e n minus 1 into f double dash of p plus order of e n minus 1 square. So, I require this minus this. So, simply subtract this from here. So, f dash of p will cancel. So, you will be left with half f double dash of p into e n minus e n minus 1. So, that is what we have written on the right hand side. So, half of e n minus e n minus 1 into f double dash of p plus order of this term will involve e n square and e n minus 1 square. So, we now have an expression for the numerator. Let us see what is the denominator. So, consider x n minus x n minus 1. 
So, I subtract p and add p to this. So, I can write this as x n minus p minus of x n minus 1 minus p. So, that will be e n minus e n minus 1. So, I can substitute for x n minus x n minus 1 as e n minus e n minus 1. So, the expression here now is half of f double dashed of p because I omit the higher order terms because e n minus e n minus 1 cancels with e n minus e n minus 1. So, I have an expression for this. Now, I look at this factor. I know this is approximately 1 by f dashed of p right f dashed of p is this by this approximately. So, 1 by f dashed of p is this expression. So, I also have replace this by 1 by f dashed of p. So, I write down where did we start? We started with e n plus 1. So, e n plus 1 is approximately half of f double dashed of p by f dashed of p into 1 by f dashed of p into e n into e n minus 1. That is what appears here anyway this is a constant. So, I call that as c. So, e n plus 1 is c times e n e n minus 1, but in order to determine the order of convergence of a method we must have a relationship in the form e n plus 1 is a constant times e n power alpha. Alpha will determine the order of convergence, but here we have c into e n into e n minus 1. So, I must make further computations on this, so that I obtain the form as e n plus 1 equal to c into e n power some alpha. So, if alpha is the order of convergence of the secant method, then I must have mod e n plus 1 to be approximately some constant a times mod e n power alpha since already a constant c appears I have taken a constant to be a in this case. So, what does this tell mod e n plus 1 by a times mod e n power alpha must approach 1 as n tends to infinity. And therefore, from here mod e n plus 1 is a mod e n power alpha then mod e n will be approximately a into mod e n minus 1 power alpha. So, from here I obtained mod e n minus 1 is approximately 1 by a into mod e n raised to the power of 1 by alpha. And I know that e n plus 1 is c e n e n minus 1. What is e n plus 1? That is a mod e n power alpha that is the left hand side that must be approximately c into mod e n into what is mod e n minus 1? It is 1 by a mod e n power 1 by alpha. So, it is a power minus 1 by alpha into mod e n power 1 by alpha. So, I have a power 1 here minus 1 by alpha on this side. So, I have a power 1 plus 1 by alpha into c to the power of minus 1 taking it to this side that is approximately mod e n I have a power 1 here minus alpha which comes to this side and a power 1 by alpha. So, mod e n power 1 minus alpha plus 1 by alpha. I observe that the left hand side a and c are constants alpha is a constant. So, left hand side is a non zero constant while e n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, I must have the power to which e n is raised to to be 0 in order that this is satisfied. So, 1 minus alpha plus 1 by alpha must be 0. So, we have alpha square minus alpha minus 1 to be 0. So, solve this quadratic equation that gives you alpha to be 1 plus r minus root 5 by 2. We observe that 1 minus root 5 by 2 is negative 
I want alpha to be a positive constant that is the order of convergence of the method. So, this is not possible. So, alpha is positive and so I take alpha to be 1 plus root 5 by 2 and that is approximately 1.62. What is alpha? Alpha is the order of convergence of secant method and it turns out to be 1.62. What is the order of convergence of bisection method? 1. What is the order of convergence of Newton Raphson method? 2 and secant method has order of convergence which is 1.62 and so we say that the secant method has super linear convergence right. It is better than bisection method, but it is slower than Newton Raphson method which converges quadratically. So, we say that this has super linear convergence we still have to obtain the asymptotic error constant. So, we look at the right hand side of 1 and that is equal to 1 because as E n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity and therefore, the right hand side of 1 will be 1 and so we have a power 1 plus 1 by alpha into c power minus 1 must be 1. So, a must be c to the power of 1 by 1 plus alpha, but I know that alpha satisfies the equation 1 plus 1 by alpha minus alpha is 0. So, I can replace 1 plus 1 by alpha by alpha. So, I have c power 1 by alpha, but 1 by alpha is what alpha minus 1. So, c power alpha minus 1, but what is alpha 1.62. So, a is c power 1.62 minus 1. So, c to the power of 0.62 mod E n plus 1 is A mod E n power alpha, alpha is 1 plus root 5 by 2 and A is given by f double dash of p by twice f dash of p raised to the power of 0.62. So, our uh, error analysis shows that secant method <coughs> is superior to bisection method but it is inf inferior to Newton Raphson method in the sense that the order of convergence of uh, secant method is super linear it is 1.62 whereas that of uh, bisection method is 1 and order of convergence of Newton Raphson method is 2 as compared to the secant method which is 1.62 and th th these were all reflected in our examples when we solve equation f of x is equal to cos x minus x equal to 0 and we obtained the result correct to the desired degree of accuracy at the third iteration by Newton Raphson method. Whereas, at the 20th iteration by bisection method whereas, by secant method we were able to obtain the solution correct to the desired degree of accuracy at the fifth iteration and it is all because of the order of convergence of these methods. As I had already pointed out Newton Raphson method and secant method do not fall in the category of enclosure methods. We will show that they belong to the class of fixed point iteration methods. So, we shall discuss what we mean by fixed point iteration methods and then show Newton Raphson method belongs to this class and we will continue with this in the next class.